If everybody would like to stand. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. to our men alive service. <clears throat> I'd, like to watch, I'd like to also welcome those watching from home and those on DVD. I'd also like to welcome Raymond back with us today and thank him for covering for Ronnie. We look forward to what he brings us from God's word and from Acts chapter 2. I'd like to thank all the men that takes part in our service this morning and to Richard for tuning the choir. Our choir is a wee bit smaller this year because of there's a few lambing and one or two away on holidays, but we'll do our best. Uh, some announcements then. The Alternative Praise Band meet here in the church at 5 p.m. 
and Connect meet in Bershane House at 6.30. Uh, Kirk Session meet here in the church tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And the Schools and Colleges prayer meeting is on Tuesday at 2.15 down at the Manse. Uh, and all, all welcome to that. Wednesday at 8pm is a joint prayer meeting with Second Brashean and Seconds Hall for the significant number of vacancies and low number of ministry students. This is in response to a call to prayer by the moderator of Presbytery, Reverend Alistair Bates. I'd like to encourage you all to come along to that meeting. And then uh, on Thursday, the Ladies' Bible Study meet here in the church at 2.30pm. Uh, then next Sunday morning, Raymond is back with us and Ronnie is back at 6.30pm. That's all the announcements. I'll let you hand over now to you, Raymond. Thank you. No, thank you very much indeed for uh, your welcome. It's lovely uh, to be here with you today to worship again uh, in, this, in this beautiful sanctuary with, uh, as I said to, to Ronnie last week, this singing and all is marvellous. It's just so heartsome. Uh, and it's great to, to be amongst you to praise and to worship our great God. And we're going to do just that, uh, opening our hearts to sing to God's praise, I cannot tell. Let's worship together. <coughs> Oh, mm-hmm. 
Isn't that just a wonderful day to anticipate the day when the Savior of the, of the world is King, King over all, and His people are gathered with Him for all eternity. We're going to continue in our worship of God, and I've got quite a handy day today because everybody else is going to, to, do, to do the work, and we're going to call upon Gareth Dickey. Uh, first of all, to lead us in prayer. Thank you very much indeed, Gareth. Let's pray. Father God, we bow before you and acknowledge you um, as Lord of all. You are the uncreated one who alone is immortal and dwells in unapproachable light whom no one has seen or can see. Your holiness and beauty is beyond our comprehension and your eyes are too pure to even look at sin. We bow before you, Lord, and we ask that you make us so aware of our own sin, our pride, our selfishness, our envy. And in the quiet now, Lord, we take a few moments to confess the things this week we have done that dishonor you and consider the things that we should have done to honor your name. Help us, Lord, to remember the costliness of our sin. You're perfect in holiness and just, and your holiness and justice demands a penalty for all sin. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you that you chose the most spectacular way to save us from our sins. That you demonstrated your love for us that while we were still sinners, alienated from you and your enemies, you sent your son Jesus as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. And in him and his resurrection power, we have life, abundant life. And all of this for the praise and the glory of his name. Lord, we thank you that you revealed yourself to us in Jesus Christ. And that you've given, given us your Holy Spirit. And as we heard last week, this purifying power that transforms and renews our minds, that we are no longer conformed to the pattern of this world. This morning, Lord, we pray that our hearts will be softened, that our ears will be open. Lord, we know that when your word is opened, you speak to us through the God-breathed and spirit-filled words. Free us, Lord, from all distractions. May everything this morning bring you honour and bring glory to your name, to the praise of him who accomplished it all, the Lord Jesus, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Gareth. And now Keith's going to read from God's word. Thank you, Keith. <coughs> reading today is taken from Acts uh, chapter 2, commencing at verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Those people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my ser servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. 
in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders to the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. And you will not let your body see you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here today. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on the throne. Saying what has to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we're all witnesses to it, of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you see and hear and hear. For God did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all who the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. <clears throat> Thank you very much indeed, Keith. Uh, we do appreciate you. Uh, Taking that big, long, long reading. Thank you. Boys and girls, where are we going to go today? Hmm? With all these men. Do you want to come up to these spews over here? Would that be fair enough? I come on over here and I'll talk to you over here. <clears throat> and that's it there. Here. Here. There we go. So I'm just going to talk to you folk today. You. <laughs> well, there you are. Is that us all gathered? That's good. That's good. Oh dear. Oh. Here we go. Do you ever make plans, boys and girls? Do you ever make plans, yeah? Well, of course you do. Everybody makes plans, don't they? What are we going to think about? We're going to be thinking about making plans today. You have to plan ahead, right? Don't you? You can't just get up in the morning or, or every morning and just say, well, we'll just take it as it comes. Do you? Not at all. It would be nice to do that. Maybe you do it for a day or two over the holidays, but the rest of the time you plan. I'm sure you're very organized. Yeah, you have your alarm clock set to waking you up at 7.30. Or is that late? 
What time do you go off to school, lad? Yeah. What time do you, What time does school start? Oh, you have to go on a bus. Yeah. Oh, seven thirty. Sometimes I'm not even getting out of bed at that time. 7:30. About seven thirty. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And then, what about eating breakfast? Then you've had your breakfast before that. Do you all have breakfast in the morning? Yeah, and you have to remember to have your breakfast. You get dressed, you brush your teeth, and then whatever whatever's laid out for you that day, whatever you've whatever you've planned for that particular particular day. Maybe you're something like this on your desk or in your head, all the things you have to do. Things you have to do before school, things you have to do after school, right? Those are the important things, aren't they? Like homework. Uh huh. Things you have to do after school and then your, your evening meal, whatever it might be, and then after dinner, what are you going to do? What do you do after dinner? You play? Sit down. Just sit down. <laughs> and, <laughs> and be very quiet. Oh, that's good. That's good. You sit down. You, you have all your plans made for what you, you're going to do. And then, of course, before bed. Right? You have a bedtime routine, don't you? I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. Do you put your PJs on before you brush your teeth, or do you brush your teeth before you put your PJs on? Put PJs on first. On first, right? Is that right? You're all the same. Ah, oh, there you are. Well, look, you, you make all these, all these plans and um, oh, I'm pointing to the wrong thing here. Oh, sometimes you have to plan for the whole, the whole year. What's going to happen in this big year that lies ahead, 2024? We have one of these at home, a calendar like this. And on the, there's circles put on it. And there's things like birthdays, right? All the birthdays of the family and my grandchildren, all the rest of it. You don't miss them, do you? No, they wouldn't be too happy if Granda missed the, the grandchildren's birthday. So we put all those on. We put on holidays. That covers about half of it now that I'm retired. So there you are. You put on, you put on holidays. You put on all, all sorts of things. Speaking here, doing this, doing that, and doing the other thing. And you plan out for a whole year. And maybe you have plans. Maybe you have plans for the, the whole year ahead. But look, here's what I want to ask you for a moment. Do your plans always work out? Why, what, why not? What happens? Hmm? Have you ever s- promised somebody you'll go to a birthday party? Yeah. And then you've taken sick? Hmm? No, it's never happened. Sometimes things like that can happen, you know. Things like that can happen. Or you maybe plan to go outside and, and, and play football. And it snows. And you can't really play football in the snow. You play something else. Okay, there's many a time our plans don't really work out the way we want them to work out. And that's understandable. We could be sick, maybe. Maybe we plan, we tell a friend, yeah, I'll come round to your house on Thursday. And then we go home and mum says, "Uh uh-oh, you're going to the dentist on Thursday. Or, I'm going to the dentist and I can't leave you around, you have to come with me. And so your plans are all skedaddled. Did you ever hear that word? Yeah, some of you did. Your plans are all skedaddled. Well, look, I wanted to talk today. Do you remember last week we were talking about the Holy Spirit? Right? Do you remember that? You've got all that sorted out in your head. Good. Tell other people. It's very difficult to understand all that we were talking about last week about the Holy Spirit. But listen, here's what I wanted to to let you know today. God planned to send the Holy Spirit and he told someone about it. He told, we're going here, a man named Joel. He said to Joel, I am going to pour out my spirit. Right? Right? It was 800 years before that happened. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a long time? God planned, God planned 
to send his Holy Spirit. And God said in the Bible that all his plans will come to pass. And I'm sure people were waiting from Joel said this 800 years then. When is this going to happen? When is God going to pour out his, his Holy Spirit in such a wonderful way? And it happened on the day of Pentecost, didn't it? God poured out his Holy Spirit and people began to tell other people. The disciples of Jesus began to tell other people about Jesus. Boys and girls, here's, here's what I want to, you to understand and, and everybody else to understand, that God makes many promises and he makes many plans and they all happen. They all happen. Maybe, it, maybe it's a long time from God says he's going to do something until he does it. But his plans always happen. Do you know that it was way back in the very beginning of the Bible, way back in Genesis, that God promised to send a savior? Imagine. Imagine. Do you know how many years it was before that happened? 4,000 plus. But God sent his Savior into, into the world. Do you know what his name is? Yes? Jesus. Jesus. And he came, didn't he? He came to save us from our sins by dying on the cross of Calvary and calling us to trust in him. And then Jesus again promised those disciples of his Whenever Jesus died and returned to heaven, he, he promised his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit. And that's what we were reading about today. The plan of God being fulfilled when God sent his Holy Spirit into the world. So I think God's greatest plan, God's greatest plan was the one at the very beginning when he said he would send someone to be our Savior and our Lord. And you know what? God has planned something else. You know what God has planned? He has planned that one day Jesus will come back again. Just the way he came in before, he'll come back again into the world and he'll call everybody who loves him to be with him forever and forever and forever. And we, boys and girls, and grown-ups too, we wait on the fulfillment of that plan of God's which will surely, surely come to pass. Thank you, boys and girls, for your, for your attention. We're going, to, we're going to sing now. We're going to sing. And this is, this is one of my favorite pieces from... You know, people in the congregation I'm in now, they think that I am a city of light singer because when I get the opportunity to sing something modern like this, I sing city of light songs and I love, I love this song. Now, whenever I sing it, right, I keep thinking that I'm sitting with my grandchildren and I'm singing this, this lovely song to them. I'm not going to sing it alone, right? Well, that wouldn't be nice. But I just love the, the words of this. So think about those, everybody, as we sing together. They're so lovely. Thanks, Richard.
girls and boys. Now do you know where your seats are? Yeah? Zoom on back. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. safe safe and sound. Uh, We're going to receive the offering now and uh, the men's group uh, redeemed are going to take it up, are they? Yeah, okay. Are they going to sing? Are they going to sing? What are they going to sing, Richard? Oh, that's the piece they're going to sing, right. right. Oh, there's no space in my... (laughs) There's no space. There you go. Okay, we're, we're looking forward to this now. Men's group are going to sing redeemed while the offering is being received.
Thank you very much indeed. Man, that was, uh, that was lovely singing. Powerful words, aren't they? Aren't they? Uh, John Hamilton is now going to lead us in prayer of intercession. Thanks, John. Just let us bow to come to the Lord in prayer, to pray for the people needing prayer and just pray for our country and just the things in our world at this time. So, Lord, as we come here this morning, Lord, to bring our prayers before you and our praises, Lord, we have much to praise you for, just as the, pray, the things you blessed us with throughout the week, Lord, since we last met. And, even this day, Lord, just we just do praise you for all that's going on here this morning in our church, Lord. We do thank you just for the work of our Sunday school here this morning, Lord, and the teachers that was there, Lord, and to teach those young children, Lord. And uh, just do thank you for the parents, Lord, that laid it in their heart to bring them along to the Sunday school this morning, Lord. And we just do thank you for each child that was at the front of our church here this morning, Lord, to hear the children's address, Lord. We just... Thank you for each one, Lord, as they come into your church here. And, Lord, we do thank you for this service, or men's service this morning, Lord. And we do thank you for Raymond, the Reverend Raymond Kelly, coming along here with us this morning. And uh, we just thank you for the sound team and, and everybody that's taken part, Lord. And we just do pray that people that's listening online and every head that's bowed here this morning, Lord, and just... Uh, as DVDs goes out through it this week, Lord, this message will spread far away, Lord, and bring glory to you today, Lord. And we, as Lord, we do just pray for even our prosperity at this time in Valamina. We do just think of those churches vacant at the minute, at uh, just in Clock and Richard and in Bali and Bali Keel and Trinity there in Ahoka, Lord. We do just pray for these churches, Lord, that they will get a uh, minister for their pulpit, Lord. And, in the near future, Lord, and there'll be the gospel they preach in these places of worship, Lord, on a Sunday. And Lord, we do think about Ronnie this morning, just as he's out there at the Grange, Lord. We do just ask you with Ronnie as he's travelled there over at the Grange, Lord. And we just pray for that church too at this time. And their vacancy, Lord, and they're getting new elders installed, Lord. We just pray that the right men will come forth there, Lord, to lead that church with elders, Lord. So we just pray for that church too at this time. And and Lord, we do think even the bigger picture in our church for presbyters at this time as they, as they start uh, to uh, elect the you moderator and the presbytery, Lord, that, uh, we do thank you for the Reverend Mohini has been on this role this past year there now, and it's, uh, he steps down now in a few months' time, Lord, at the right man come forward, and we know you have the man chosen to come and lead this do this duty, Lord, and uh, you'll be preparing him for it, Lord. We just do pray that you will give him the energy and the strength to carry out his duties, Lord, and serve you and the, uh, the 19 presbyteries in our districts here, Lord, at this time. And, and Lord, we do just even pray for our schools and our principals and teachers at this time in our schools, Lord. We know there's many problems going to arise in schools too, and just uh, we just do pray for them, Lord, in this challenge that comes up that principals and teachers has to deal with, Lord, that uh, you'll just give them wisdom to cope and bring them through these difficult situations, Lord, at this time too in our schools. And we do thank you even for the faith mission year, Jenny McCulloch, Lord, as she goes into the schools the, this time and through getting to the SU groups and that, Lord. We just thank you for the faith mission as they opened up them doors to get into the schools to Preach the word, Lord, and take the scripture union classes, Lord, in the schools at this time. And, and Lord, we do <clears throat> just even pray for our government at this time. And we know, Lord, that we all have different opinions who should be in leadership and storming at this time. And we, um, but Lord, we do just pray that uh, you'll be in control and uh, you'll give them wisdom. And Lord, they'll pray to you and ask you, Lord, to guide them, Lord, and uh, you'll be in total control and the leadership leader of this country, Lord, that we live in. And we just pray that we'll get together in peace, Lord, and work for this country, Lord, and even serve you, Lord, and our land here. And Lord, we do just even think over the world at this time, the, the brokenness is in it and the, the darkness is in it, Lord. We just think of these wars in Israel and Ukraine and that's just wars, Lord. We just do pray for peace, that they will see peace coming to the land, those two areas, and uh, 
We just do even think about turtle deaths and the amount of deaths in each land over war, Lord. So just pray for peace. And Lord, just we do this morning, just um, pray for the people in our congregation here that's unwell, Lord, just struggling with bad health, Lord, and just uh, maybe would love to be here in our pews with us, Lord, just and just through maybe their frailty of life and health, Lord, they just come to with us, Lord, we just do pray as to listen maybe online or listen to DV, Lord, that uh, they'll feel your closeness with them in their homes at this time, and we do just pray for people, Lord, that's struggling with just results coming through and burden with pressure of life, Lord, and just that you'll be close to them, Lord, just in the next days, Lord, as maybe results come through, and Lord, that they'll just, uh, you'll bring them out of these darkness they're in, Lord, and you'll help them through it, Lord, and just pray for everybody in our congregation this time, Lord, as they struggle with it's just the pressure of life, Lord, should it be health or workloads or ever, Lord, and you'll just be with us through the next days and weeks and months, Lord, and we'll just serve you here in Bershane and bring glory to you, Lord. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, uh, John, for your prayers and, uh, of course, for the prayers especially of, of Grange. Uh, you, you will notice there was a prayer meeting mentioned on Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Uh, we are at a very challenging time within uh, the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. Uh, Trinity was mentioned there as being vacant, but you know there's a silver lining to that because Brian Smith's going to my play, old place in Garva, and I'm delighted about that, but that's the way it is at the minute. Uh, there's not that many coming along. So do please make every effort uh, to go along on Wednesday evening and join with others in prayer. Uh, and of course, to always be remembering this situation that God would indeed move in his power and call into the ministry those whom he would have serve him to the glory of, of his wonderful name. It's so important uh, at this time that we all turn our eyes upon Jesus to look to our Savior. We're going to sing about that now.
We pray for a moment. Jesus, as we turn our eyes to your word, we pray that you would make us as a people who receive that truth, not only who acknowledge it, but who live according to it. So I pray you will anoint my lips as I open up that word. And yes, may it bring glory. Glory to your name, for we pray in that wonderful name that is Jesus. Amen. Imagine the scene. Imagine the scene. In the shadow of the temple there in Jerusalem, certainly the 12 apostles, if not the whole 120 believers who had gathered in the upper room, were together and were testifying to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were all Galileans, yet they were speaking to the people who had gathered for the festival in Jerusalem. They were speaking in the language of the many visitors, people who were from modern-day Turkey and Syria and Iraq, possibly also Iran and Lebanon and Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. From all across, the, in many ways, the then known world had gathered and these, mainly fishermen, countrymen, tax collectors and so on, began preaching, began talking about Jesus in languages that they could understand. Over here, there's a group from Turkey. Down there, there's a group of Syrians. Over in the corner, there's a, 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 a bunch from Iraq and so on. And the sound of many languages is filling the air. And as time passes, more and more people join. What is going on here? What is this? Word spreads, spreads throughout Jerusalem. And, and many join the crowd. They're naturally curious. There's something big is happening. They want to know what it is 
they arrive on the scene and they are utterly amazed. And can't you and I well imagine that? Utterly amazed at what's, at what's going on. Then Peter, he gets himself into a, a, a prominent position where he can speak to the, the people and one by one we can imagine the other conversations ending. We can imagine the hush. The hush as people look. And there's that big bold fisherman standing on, on the steps looking down upon the people. And then his powerful voice reverberates around the the temple precincts. And he preaches a sermon. He preaches a sermon. The first in the the new era. He brings a powerful powerful word. A word that was was so mighty in the power of God that 3,000 people, 3,000 people believed that day and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 3,000 people who were lost in their, in, in their sin. 3,000 people who were, who were caught up and blinded in their ignorance, who were far from God. They responded to the call of the gospel and were saved. A man, Peter. A man, men. A follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaims Christ. And 3,000 come to, to believe. Men, what can we do in the power of the Holy Spirit in our time and our generation as we share the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Isn't that what is expected of us? If we know the Savior and walk with the Savior? Let's examine this sermon of Peter's and and do so with the prayer that something would hit home men in our hearts that would move us, move us towards serving Jesus with the fullness of our lives. And ladies, you can listen in. You can listen in. Let's look then in the first place. The explanation that Peter gave. You know, it it was crazy what was going on in Jerusalem that day. And so uh, there needed to be some sort of an explanation. People were saying something that was out of the ordinary, as I say. And and they were curious, if, if not concerned. And therefore, Peter just tells this gathering congregation that this extraordinary phenomenon of the Holy Spirit was the reason why these people were declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. And he tells them, you know, in some ways, folks, this ought not to surprise us because this was prophesied in Joel. Okay, boys and girls, many years earlier, One person, (laughs) well done, well done. 800 years earlier, the prophet Joel had declared that God would bring great, great blessing. He quotes Joel, verse 17. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit in all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. We are, Peter is saying, in these last days. God, the Holy Spirit, is responsible for what you now see and what you now hear. This is the outworking of the Spirit's ministry as was promised and planned in God's sovereign decree and delivered through the the prophet Joel. This is the dawning of a new age, says Peter, in which God will move towards the completion of his great plan of salvation. And, and, you know, let's just stop there for a moment and understand. We have been singing much about it today. We have been singing much about the fact that we are living in the closing period. We are living with the anticipation of the completeness of God's plan of salvation at the very end of time, aren't we? Isn't that what we have been singing? 
We, we live, you like, between the events of Pentecost and that appointed time, a time that is set that thrills our hearts when we who know and love the Lord will be with Jesus in the glory of his kingdom forevermore. Oh, we love that. We love that. That's just where, where we are living. We are living in the times when spirit-filled Christians proclaim salvation in the name of Jesus. You know, men, we who have received this wonderful message know that we are not to keep it to ourselves. We know that we are to share it with all who are not yet trusting in Christ as their Savior and Lord. We're doing it in these days. But surely these days are running out. Surely there's a countdown going on. We are living in the days of God's grace, the days in which the opportunity is given for, to us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And we know that these days, these days of God's grace, will not continue forever and ever and ever. We know that. We know that one day Christ will return. And we know something else. We know that death cuts short those days in reality for many. Isn't that right? They'll not be alive when the re Lord returns. Okay? So we live in this time when we have the opportunity to serve the Lord and proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. And, and there is an urgency to that task. You know, last week uh, we considered the implication of the Holy Spirit's continuing presence. The implication that that has for us today. Uh, and I trust that in obedient response we opened our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit and we desire to be filled with his presence and his power and his influence. What we are seeing in the scriptures here before us today is what we are called to do as spirit-filled followers of Jesus. We're not all called to, to preach sermons, but we are all called, we are all called to courageously tell others about Jesus, not on our own power and strength, but in dependence upon the Spirit's power. Perhaps we are thinking we do not testify enough. And that's to our shame and sorrow, isn't it? In our humanity, we are weak. We are fearful. We are anxious as to how others might respond if we tell them about Jesus. We lack the courage of Peter and the others in the day of Pentecost. We're, we're fearful of the reaction of those to whom we, we would speak. But, you know, we must, by God's grace... And in his strength, overcome these barriers and seek to address this urgent situation in our time and in our generation. Actively and purposefully seeking out opportunities to speak fearlessly of our God and Savior. Do you know when I get together with a bunch of men, boy, I can talk about sport. You want to talk about the rugby on Friday night? Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? And then talk about, talk about sport. I hear men talking about their work. Well, I never worked. Um, hobbies, whatever it is, families. Talk about lots of things. What about talking about Jesus? Talking about Jesus. It, maybe, maybe it is time, and I want to encourage you, if it is time for you to man up, really to man up and to open up conversations with your family and your friends and your work colleagues and so on, Just looking for those opportunities, praying for those opportunities, asking Jesus to give you those opportunities to talk about him in those various circumstances that you meet day by day, knowing that the Holy Spirit will empower you to speak his words. When you make this a matter of prayer, men, before you head out to your work tomorrow, whatever that might be, will you ask God to give you the opportunity to speak to someone this day about Jesus. And ladies, you too. 
Følge. The explanation Peter gave. The message Peter proclaimed. was one single subject. What did Peter to talk about that day in Jerusalem? To talk about Jesus. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. But it was more defined than that, wasn't it? He didn't just tell a a pile of stories, as it were, about Jesus. He told them what Jesus had done for them. He preached the cross. He proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He, He explained to them that Jesus died for their sins. And he declared that all who trust in Jesus for salvation would be saved. Here, uh, uh, briefly, just from the text, and I'm not going to labor this uh, uh, at all. Just let's look at how, how Peter worked all of this out in practice. It was a ministry, openly attesting to the powerful miracles, the wonders, and the signs that Jesus did. These ind- clearly indicated, of course, that God's approval was on Jesus Christ. He spoke of Jesus' death, that Jesus was handed over by them. But not only by them, but by the definite plan and foreknowledge of God that they, with the assistance of the Roman overlords, would crucify him. And it was all part of God's plan. God's plan. He spoke of Jesus' burial. Using a quotation from Psalm 16, quite a long quote there, and I haven't covered it all, of course. Peter proves from the psalm that it couldn't refer alone to David, but in fact David was speaking prophetically about Jesus. David's burial, of course, was permanent, wasn't it? David was placed in a tomb, but Jesus' burial was only temporary. His body didn't decay in the grave. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. Jesus' resurrection Verses 31 and 32. Interpreting David's words again, Peter explains that he's referring to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he and the other apostles are witnesses of all of this, of the resurrection. David's prophecy and their testimony converge in declaring that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised Jesus from the dead. And then finally, Jesus' exaltation and continued ministry. The fact that Jesus ascended into into heaven, where he now sits at the right hand of God, and from there he has poured out the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So that in a rough way is the message that Peter proclaimed that day. But look how he ended his message. Know for certain. Know for certain that God has made him both Lord, Sovereign Lord, and Christ, the mighty Messiah. This is the one you crucified. Boy, Peter was fearless, wasn't he, in preaching that? (laughs) Think about where he's standing. In the middle of Jerusalem. In the heart of Jerusalem where the crucifixion was planned and executed. And who's he speaking to? But to many who called for that crucifixion, many who demanded that crucifixion of Jesus. Boy, he was courageous, wasn't he? He was mighty. He wasn't afraid, you know, because he knew that Jesus was with him. The Jesus he proclaimed wasn't merely one who was crucified. But he was the very son of God who was crucified and raised from the dead. The one who ascended into heaven and now from God's right hand was directing the progress of the gospel and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Men again, this is our message. You're familiar with this message, aren't you? You know Jesus. 
you love Jesus, you trust in Jesus, you serve Jesus. God has made this Jesus both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom you folk in Jerusalem crucified. The Messiah, the promised one, the anointed one, who came from the glory of heaven to live in this earth, to die on a cross for sin, but not his own sin, for the sin of others. His life, his death, his resurrection and exaltation unitedly proclaim in an awesome way the power of Jesus to save, to gift eternal life. Fearlessly, man. There is no message greater than this that we can share with others. But let me say to any who are present or indeed who are watching, following this service online, let me say to any who are not yet followers of Jesus Christ, this truth is the only truth which brings salvation. The truth that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. The truth that Jesus died to save sinners. In the content of Peter's sermon, he said that Jesus was attested to by God. You know, think of the miracles, think of the healings, think of his amazing words. He was murdered, he was laid in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead having accepted the payment of his life as an atonement for our sin, he died in our place. He had no need to die. He was sinless. Death had no hold on him. But he gave up his life. He gave up his life. And now this same Jesus ascended into glory directs the operation of his church through the people under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But why is this? If you're not trusting in Christ, why is all of this relevant? It's relevant in order that you might receive this Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. There's no one else. There's no one else who can save you from your sin. And reunite you with God. Cast off the alienation. And bring you into the full sphere of God's love. Eternal blessing. And that forevermore. This is the, the whole logic and rationality that sustains the, sustains the church. This is a message of, of God's redeeming love. The message Peter proclaimed from the beginning of the church age. Jesus is both Lord and Christ. This is the only message for all who are living in the brokenness of this world, living without hope, grasping onto something that maybe brings a short-term fulfillment, but its beauty fades away and they're back where they started again. Jesus comes and brings new life. A life that he described as one in all its fullness. What a life. A life lived for Jesus to the glory of God. I want to finish very briefly with the response the message received. I've already mentioned it. Peter Peter and the others expected results. They expected the Holy Spirit to bless their preaching and they were not disappointed that day. The people were, were cut to the heart, we're told. They were cut to the heart and they asked, what shall we do? And Peter's response was abundantly clear. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If they believed the truth about Jesus, then they must, in repentance of their sin, seek the forgiveness of Jesus and they must identify with Jesus. Think about this. 
Do you know, this was going to be a huge step, wasn't it, for those Jews in Jerusalem that day to respond to a message like this? It meant them placing their trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior, not in the law, not in their Jewish heritage, not in anything else, but trusting in Jesus as Lord and Christ and Savior, believing, believing and acting. It demanded from them true sorrow for their sin, a genuine turning away. They were cut to the heart. A genuine turning away from all of their sin, that genuine desire to follow Jesus. We call that repenting. Repenting. And he also demanded that they publicly identify with Jesus. Again, think of that. The one that their leaders murdered. They had to identify with him. Step out. Step out from Judaism and go with Jesus. A big, bold step, wasn't it? Would anyone heed the call? Well, we had a spoiler at the beginning of the sermon, and I'm sure you were aware anyway. 3,000 <coughs> believed that day and were saved. They repented of their sin. They identified with Jesus through baptism. I'm going to finish just with two, two challenges. All Jesus asks of me, getting personal here, all Jesus asks of me every time I enter into conversation about him or every time I rise to preach the gospel is that I'm faithful. I've lived with that for as a minister for 35 years, only ever wanting to be faithful to the word of God and proclaiming Jesus for who he is. And I trust today I've been faithful. And so when I'm asking you men, not, not, not to rise up into a pulpit, but that would be great. You know, we'd be praying for that on Wednesday. But I'm not asking that much of you. I'm asking that you simply present Jesus wherever you go in your word and through your life that others will see the beauty of the one you love and the one you serve. And yes, I do challenge anyone who has not simply responded to the gospel, the eternal life-giving gospel. I want to call you to salvation today. Jesus said, the promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far off. He called them to repent. He called them to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. Will you meet that challenge today if you haven't previously? I do hope I've been faithful. I do trust I've been faithful. But the responsibility of the response to this message is over to you. It's over to you. You can walk out one of these three doors or four doors. I don't know how many doors there are. You can walk, walk out one of these, these doors. Or you can switch off the screen. Or you can respond to the Holy Spirit speaking into your heart. Calling you. To Jesus Christ. What will it be for you today, friend? Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for Peter's wonderful explanation of Pentecost, what happened on that day, opening up for our gaze that wonderful plan of yours to save a people like me and many gathered in this place today and many in our land today. And many who have gone before into the heavenly places. Father, we thank you for the glory of the gospel. We thank you for all, for all that Christ has done, for the life that he lived, the death that he died. That he being raised in your power. 
is ever exalted. And he continues to build his church. Build his church, for he is both Lord and Christ. And Father, we do pray. We do pray the welcoming sound of your call will be heard in this place today and in the days ahead in the places where we work and move and relax and engage with others that many will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of their sin and acknowledge him as their Savior and Lord. And unto Jesus be the glory and honor. Amen. Men's group are going to uh, sing to God's praise to enable us to, to meditate upon his word. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Can I very quickly just thank everyone who, who took part in the service. Uh, we pray that all been done to God's glory, that he will be, be honoured and we will know his smile upon us. We're going to bring our service to a close, singing what love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Wonderful peace in that wonderful refrain, our sins, they are many. Our sins, they are many. But his mercy is more. Uh, what a saviour. Let's sing to his glory.
pray. Father, we thank you for your truth, the truth that we have been singing and has been sung to us throughout this service, the truth read, the truth prayed, the truth proclaimed. We pray that we might honor that truth, that we might know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit resting and abiding with us both now and forevermore. Amen.